In a previous video, we looked at the work done by a force, and we related that work done to the change in potential energy of the object. In this, we're going to look at the reverse. If we know what the potential energy as a function of position is, we can use that equation to find the force as a function of position. So here I have an object moving in one dimension. In the diagram, they're using s for the position variable. Um, in the equations, I'm using x. So it's moving along the x-axis. It moves from a position x to a position x plus delta x. The work done by the force is the parallel component of the force, the component of the force along the x-axis, f sub x, multiplied by the distance. If delta x is small enough, we can treat the force as being approximately constant, and so the work done is approximately that constant force times that distance. We then had related the change in potential energy to that work done. The change in potential energy associated with a conservative force is the opposite of the work done by that conservative force. So if that force F was a conservative force, then the change in potential energy was negative F sub X delta X. It was the negative of the X component of the force times how far it moved delta X. And graphically, we had looked at that. That work done was the area between the graph of force as a function of position and the position axis. Again, that we were treating the force as being constant or we were letting delta S shrink to zero so that instead of looking at Riemann sums, we were looking at an integral. If I rearrange the equation, of delta u equals the negative of f delta x, we can get that the force equals negative delta u over delta x. And in the limit that delta x shrinks to zero, that's the definition of a derivative. So this x component of the force is negative du dx. The x component of the force is the negative derivative of potential energy with respect to position. This potential energy needs to be a function of position, and so we take the derivative of the potential energy with respect to position, we take the negative of that, and that gives us force as a function of position. That gives us the parallel component of the force as a function of position. That negative sign is important. The force is negative du dx. So the parallel component is the negative derivative, or again, a derivative is a slope, so it's the negative of the slope of a potential energy versus position graph. If I have a graph of u versus position, then if I find the slope at a point, which is the derivative, the force is the negative of the slope at that point. It's the negative derivative of potential energy. It's the negative of the slope. That's one of the most common things that people will forget. They will look at something like this and say, oh, the slope is negative, so this force is negative. But this is actually showing a positive force. If the slope is negative, then the force is positive. So let's look at an example that we already know of. If we're looking at gravitational force near the surface of the Earth, where g, the acceleration due to gravity, is a constant value. So we're looking at close to the surface of the Earth, where the force of gravity, we already know that it's m times g and it's downward. And we know that gravitational potential energy near the surface of the Earth is mgh or mgy, where y is our position above the ground. And so this would be a graph of potential energy as a function of position. U equals mgy, so as y gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the potential energy is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The slope of that, that would be the derivative of U with respect to y, would be mg, but the force is the negative of that slope. The force is negative mg. The force points in the negative y direction. So the value of the gravitational force is the negative of the slope of the potential energy. Looking at this point, if I look at the slope at that point, the force is the negative of that slope. So it's negative derivative of mgy with respect to y. mg is a constant, so the derivative of y is 1. So we get negative mg. 
So sometimes you're asked to look at the relationship between potential energy as a function of position and force as a function of position. And so again, the force is the negative slope of the potential energy. And so with this potential energy graph here, where we have a negative slope, this is where the force is positive. Here, where we have zero slope at x2, the slope of the potential energy graph is zero. That's where the force is zero. Here, where the slope is positive between x2 and x3, that's where the force is negative. At x3, the slope is zero. So at x3, the force is zero. From x3 to x5, the slope of the potential energy graph is negative, so that's where the force is positive. It's a positive value for the force. At x5, the slope is zero, so at x5, the force is zero. And from x5 onward, the slope is positive, so that means that the force is negative. Again, this is where people will make the mistake of forgetting the negative sign. The force is negative du dx. And so you might be asked about the force at x1. You need to be able to look at that and say, oh, the, the force at position x1 is going to be positive. The slope is negative, so that means the force is positive. That means that the force is in the positive x direction. The force is pushing it towards a bigger position. From x2 to x3, where the slope is positive, that's where the force is negative. It's pushing it back towards a smaller position. When we talked about forces earlier, we talked about equilibrium. Equilibrium is where the force is zero. It's where the net force is zero. The points of equilibrium on a potential energy graph are the points where the slope is zero. At x2, at x3, and at x5, those are all points where the slope was zero. Those are all points where the object is in equilibrium. Those are the points where the force is zero. In a separate video, we will be looking specifically at equilibrium and the different types of equilibrium, stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium, and neutral equilibrium, and how those relate to potential energy graphs. So let's look at a calculus example. Here, we have a potential energy function. We're given that the potential energy as a function of position is four x squared divided by one plus two x cubed quantity to the fourth power. And we want to find the equation for force as a function of position. And so the force as a function of position is negative du dx. We need to be able to take the derivative of that potential energy equation. To take the derivative of this function, we need to use the quotient rule. The quotient rule says that the derivative is the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom divided by the bottom squared. And so taking that derivative, we have our negative out front. Again, don't forget the negative sign. It's negative du dx. So it's the denominator, one plus two x cubed quantity to the fourth power times the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of four x squared is eight x minus the top four x squared times the derivative of the bottom. For the derivative of the denominator, we need to use the chain rule. So that would be four times one plus two x cubed to the third power times the derivative of two x cubed, which is six x squared. And it's all that divided by the denominator squared. So one plus two x cubed quantity to the fourth power, that whole quantity squared. Sometimes it's enough to just leave it like that, to show that you can take the derivative, but often we want to simplify it. So the next few steps are just going to be simplifying this equation. And so to simplify this, we can factor out one plus two x cubed quantity cubed in the numerator. And so doing that in this first term, that leaves one of those quantities. In the second term, I've factored all of them out. And then I have one plus two x cubed quantity cubed over one plus two x cubed quantity to the eighth power. So I can simplify that. So that becomes just one plus two x cubed to the fifth power in the denominator. Again, I might want to simplify it a little bit more. If you have a TI Inspire CAS that can do symbolic differentiation, you might plug that in and they give you something that looks very different. They give you this quantity that's on the screen, eight X times the quantity 10 X cubed minus one over 2x cubed plus 1 to the fifth power. 
So what I'd like to just quickly do is just go through the algebra to show that our equation is equivalent to that simplified equation. So from the last slide, this was the expression we had once we divided out the one plus two x cubed to the third power. And so I can distribute that negative sign through. So I have negative eight x times the quantity one plus two x cubed plus, again, negative times negative is positive. So plus 16 x squared times six x squared divided by one plus two x cubed to the fifth power. I can multiply through that negative eight x. So that's negative eight x minus 16 x to the fourth and then 16x squared times 6x squared is 96x to the fourth, and the denominator is still the same. So 96x to the fourth minus 16x to the fourth is 80x to the fourth minus 8x divided by the denominator, 2x cubed plus one to the fifth power. And the last step is I can factor out an 8x. So I have 8x times the quantity 10x cubed minus one divided by 2x cubed plus one whole quantity to the fifth power. Again, this green equation would be perfectly fine for writing what the force as a function of position is. Sometimes you're going to be using that. You might be looking at the force at a specific point. And so sometimes it's just easier to have a simplified version of the equation, but there would be nothing wrong with leaving it as this little bit longer equation. That way you don't make an algebra mistake. So finally, I'd like to close with just an example. We have a particle that's moving along the x-axis, and we're given the potential energy as a function of position. So we have this graph of u versus x. And I want to find the x component of the force at x equals four meters. So here's x equals four meters. So I want to look at this point, and I want to find the x component of the force. The force is related to the slope. Again, you have to be careful. The slope is two, so it goes up four and over two, so the slope is two. Don't fall for the distractor. The force is not positive two newtons. The slope there is positive two. The force is not positive two. The force is the negative of the slope. So the slope was two. The force is the negative of the slope. So the force is negative two newtons. In a separate video, we're going to talk about potential energy curves and looking at the motion of the particle, looking at where it speeds up, where it slows down, looking at the idea of conservation of energy with potential energy curves, and again, talking about stable equilibrium versus unstable equilibrium.